Good evening, everybody. Before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping uh, items. Um, your emergency exits are over there and over there. Um, we are broadcasting tonight through Zoom. Um, hopefully, anyone on Zoom right now is getting a decent broadcast. And we'll be recording. Um, also, uh, at the end, we'll do a live Q&A. If, um, please go to the microphone that we've got standing up there. If you do need a microphone handed to you, please let us know. Um, Zoom, your audio is off and we have the Q&A later. We did take questions ahead of time and we will try to answer any questions received ahead of time during our live Q&A. Um, please silence your cell phones. Uh, we also have surveys on the chairs. Um, you can fill out the, uh, the paper version and then there's also a digital QR code if you wanna do it online. Um, if you do fill them out, uh, the paper, you can leave them there or bring them up to any of the tables at the exit doors. Um, once I, uh, as I mentioned, we will have a Q&A session after the meeting, after the presentation, so hold your questions until then. Uh, and also, once Q&A session is done, we will have resource, we have resource tables here, and we'll stay uh, for a little bit to take, um, have conversations, answer questions, and uh, anything else that you need. Um, so I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Supervisor Susan Ellenberg and hand over the mic. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It is so nice to be here uh, with all of you. For those of you who I don't know, my name is Susan Ellenberg. I serve as the Vice President of the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors. I represent District 4, which includes the beautiful cities of Campbell and Santa Clara, much of uh, the West San Jose neighborhoods and the unincorporated pocket of Burbank. So thank you, first of all, to the Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council for organizing these information sessions on, wild, on wildfire preparation and prevention. No matter where you call home in California, wildfires affect our environment and the ongoing drought and existential threat of climate change make the need to proactively fight wildfires greater than ever. Altogether, the, the 20 most destructive fires in California history have destroyed more than 52,000 structures and cost the lives of more than 200 people. Just one life lost to wildfires is of course too high and the ongoing financial and environmental cost of destruction is not sustainable. I, along with my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors, believe in the value of a strong community wildfire protection plan and the work of the Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council. We also share an interest in making sure that the County Central Fire Prevention District has all the tools it needs to be more effective every season. This past September, my colleagues, Supervisors Chavez and Lee brought a referral to the Board to direct administration to allocate resources for the drone fire protection and fire suppression program. And a report from county administration at today's Board of Supervisors meeting took a step forward to securing funding to help with training for fire personnel. You have our backs and we need to make sure that we always have yours. Fire safety is a shared responsibility throughout the county. And the more we can learn and share with others, the safer we will all be. I am looking forward to the program tonight to learn along with the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna let Dana come up to the stand to talk a little bit about what the Office of Emergency Management has going on. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Supervisor Ellenberg, for your words and being here tonight, of course. So thanks for having me here tonight. My name is Dana Reed. I'm the Director of Emergency Management for the County of Santa Clara. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of our, the hazard mitigation plan we're working on. This is a document that is actually done every five years for our county. It includes all 15 jurisdictions and of course the county. And this year we actually have the water district uh, joining us as well in the document. So we went out and we actually used grant money to produce this document. So there was, it's at no cost to the jurisdictions, no cost to the county. 
Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the grant process took a little bit longer than we wanted it to, but we're rolling now, we're getting it done. Uh, and it will include everyone. And then ultimately each jurisdiction will need to adopt it. And of course the county will need to do so. So what's this really mean to you in the community and, and how has it kind of come together with CWPP? Well, within the framework of the hazard mitigation plan, projects are identified by jurisdiction that might make them better prepared, not only for wildfire, but for, for floods and other projects, seismic upgrades to particular uh, structures and government or so on. So some really good examples of the last effort through the uh, HMP that's currently in effect to the end of this year. Los Gatos received grant money for a vegetation management project. Cupertino has received some money for a grid, for a power grid. A county fire uh, received in conjunction with multiple partners, Caltrans, for example, uh, money to do uh, fuel reduction. So those are some of the examples. And without the hazard mitigation plan, you can't qualify for the grant. So it's really critical to have this in place. It's also another, it's also a critical uh, document for other grants as well. So it's being worked on. Paris Stu uh, Najaf apologizes. She was not be able to be here tonight. She was ill today. I sent her home, said, I'll, I'll be here tonight. So she sends her best to everybody. So that's where we're at on that. It's being worked on. Our, our lead is Paris Stu. Uh, she's also our mitigation specialist. A couple of years back, the, the, thanks to the board, they approved a mitigation position in the Office of OEM. And the reason we wanted that is because these, these grants, as you know, are incredibly difficult and are very weighty with their guidance and trying to understand them, trying to work through the bureaucracy of both Cal OES and FEMA. So Paristu really helps to shepherd that with all our jurisdictions, and she's the lead on making sure that the HMP gets done as well. We're really excited to get that done. The CWPP is a really critical document for the county as the supervisor indicated. It's important that we have a plan. It's important that we continue to do the very best we can do to protect ourselves from wildfire. It's, it's inevitable, it's here. I mean, we had the fourth largest wildfire in this California recorded history when they started recording fires, uh, 396,000 plus acres, we called it the SCU complex. And of that 196,000 acres belonged to Santa Clara County and involved five counties. It was, it was a very large uh, incident, I think 226,000 or excuse me, 226 uh, homes or structures were destroyed is what I recall. No fatalities, very thankful for that. So that's a little bit on the HMP. And with that, it gives me great pleasure to have Chief Ed Ori come up now. I think you're next on the speaking list here. I think I, think I got that right. So take it away, Chief. You're gonna give us an overview on yes. the whole process. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor, for being here. Um, so uh, the um, the CWPP effort uh, is being funded by Cal Fire through a grant to the Fire Safe Council. In uh, 2016, um, uh, Santa Clara County Fire Central Fire took the lead, and um, they received a grant, same, same amount, and um, created one from scratch. This is more of an update. So. Um, Anyway, just wanted you to know where the funding came from. But um, most important thing is let's start from ground zero. What is a CWPP? Just so we all have a common frame of reference. Uh, it, it's from the federal government. So this is a nationwide program. It was established by the Healthy Forest Restoration Act in 2003. And um, if, if you look at CWPPs for other parts of the country, they will be wildly different, but they all have three essential basic elements to them. Um, they, they all require collaboration amongst all the stakeholders and, and the, the public. Um, they, they all identify and prioritize fuel reduction projects, and they recommend measures for homeowners and communities to take uh, and and reduce the ignitability of the structures. Now, all of this is, is gotta be part of our uh, common operating picture of what the hazards are and what the priorities for mitigation is. Um, it's our shared vision. 
and our roadmap to desired outcomes. Um, what comes out of the CWPP or the CW, CWPP itself is it's not a mandate. So uh, some people have, have viewed this as um, a blueprint, um, which it isn't. It's a series of recommendations that um, uh, willing collaborators and stakeholders have contributed. It, it's a collection of good ideas. So it does not come with permits. It doesn't come with CEQA. It doesn't come with funding. Um, all of that has to come later. And so it doesn't qualify as a project under the definitions uh, for CEQA purposes. Um, so that, that's important to know. Um, and uh, as, as uh, Dana mentioned, um, it's also critical for getting some grants. And the reason is, is because it shows the grant reviewers that this has been publicly vetted, that um, this is not some backroom deal or somebody's great idea they want to sneak through. This is um, coming from the grassroots, the public, everybody knows about it, it's common vision. So anyway, um, it, uh, it, it scores higher in the grant process. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit of history here. Um, in uh, 2009, um, there was a, a East Palo Alto or East Foothills CWPP for a small area, mainly the San Jose area. And 2008 was um, Lexington Basin. Uh, they had their own for a limited area as well. And then Palo Alto had one that wasn't called a CWPP, it was called a fire mitigation plan. But anyway, those were the precursors to the countywide plan. 2016, County Fire took the lead and um, said we need one for the whole county. And um, in 2014, did a, an application, uh, got the money. 2016 was the final product. And uh, um, County Fire hired a consultant, SWCA, who did a fantastic job. Um, they did exactly what we asked them to do and, and on time, on budget, did everything great. Um, but as soon as the ink was dry on that document, we had the Loma fire, which was 4,474 acres. It was up in the um, Loma Prieta area. And it affected a number of, of um, priority projects that were identified in this document that uh, we felt well, it sort of nullified them. So we thought, well, let's go back to the drawing board, make a, a few uh, edits, and then get it to the board for uh, signature, as well as the fire chiefs. Well, uh, all I can say is life got in the way. Um, we, we just never got it across that finish line. So which in hindsight is very unfortunate. But, um, now we're, we're, we have the opportunity to update that document and um, what, what do we want? And that's what we're all exploring here together today is starting the process. But um, I, I wanna point out some, some really important things that in 2016, we had a series of four public meetings. They, they weren't particularly well attended, um, but the, the general public, especially in this area was not all that concerned about wildfire. Uh, you know, that was, that was other parts of the state. Well, after that, um, the, the, the ground underneath us uh, changed, not literally, of course, but you can see um, since the 2016 document was prepared, look, look at those acreages. Um, it's just skyrocketed. And um, the, the cost of those for uh, suppression, for recovery, et cetera, is just not sustainable. Um, Cal Fire took the attitude that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and, and so did the state legislature and the governor, and, and began um, just a long series of uh, legislative changes, funding opportunities, staffing, and I mean, across the board, you name it, just to try to get ahead of this situation. But um, to put things in context, um, since the 2016 document was um, published, um, well, let me back up. Cal Fire keeps the top 20 list for lots of things, but uh, since 2016, 
um, 12 of the top 20 fires in terms of acreage um, occurred, 12 out of 20. Since, since that document, 12 out of 20 uh, most destructive fires occurred in terms of dollars. And since then, seven out of 20 most deadliest fires occurred. So uh, that's pretty significant. And we had a 1 million acre area, 1 million acre fire. Uh, we had two fires that, that crossed uh, over the um, Sierra Nevadas. Um, the smoke impacts were widespread. Um, even if you weren't directly impacted by the fire itself, um, the smoke got you. Um, the number of people who were evacuated around the state, phenomenal. Um, area closures. So um, couldn't go visit grandma. You couldn't go to a resort destination. You couldn't do a lot of things because of area closures that were, were very long lasting. Um, many people felt the impacts of uh, their insurance rates skyrocketing or cancellations. Uh, we started having PSPS events. And then um, you got to stop and think that was six years ago. That was only six years ago, which is not much. So a lot's happened. And, and so um, it, it, the whole point of the CWPP is to try to get ahead of that and so that we can uh, be better prepared. Uh, I like to use the analogy that, um, that future wildfires will hopefully be no more than just a bad storm. You know, you break off some branches and you, the outside of your house gets a little bit uh, beat up, but you know, we're not gonna lose lives, we're not gonna lose property, and, and we're not gonna create that kind of severe impact to the environment. So uh, next slide, please. So a um, little bit about the 2016 plan that SWCA prepared. Um, they did something a little bit unique in that they provide, they prepared a countywide document, um, which many others have done, but they also simultaneously prepared 18 annexes. So usually the, the, the it works that um, a county will, will pass a countywide document then all the local jurisdictions who want to can then create their own little CWPP that becomes an annex to the countywide. Um, they tear off of that. But um, SWCA took on the whole enchilada. And uh, that's the same model that we're, we're doing now so that it, it's all in agreement. It, it looks like one person wrote it and uh, it just makes more sense because some of the annexes are geographic in nature, where they're uh, a, a city or they're um, a area of the county, and then others are more programmatic. Okay, so like Saratoga, for example, um, County Fire, uh, they have their own annex, but then the Fire Safe Council has their own annex, and they they cover the whole county. So uh, I encourage you to take a look at the 2016 plan as a frame of reference. You can, it's, it's rather large. I have copies of it on the table back here, as well as um, the Lexington plan from 2008 and um, uh, a copy of Cal Fire's uh, Santa Clara unit strategic fire plan, which um, is our own internal um, mini CWPP. We update it, that every year. Um, let's see, in 2022, well, let me, let me go to lessons learned. Um, so there, there was um, a, a few things we learned uh, along the way. Um, we should not have postponed the approval process because uh, I found out later that uh, the issues that uh, were nullified by the fire just came back, you know, because vegetation comes back. People, uh, human nature is what it is. And so, um, um, in hindsight, should have had it approved. Um, the, the plan, we, we never thought to ask for um, a process for monitoring the progress. Um, it, it became a uh, honor system for individual stakeholders in 2016 who provided input for them to just go about their business, go do it themselves and, and that was it. But uh, in hindsight, we should have had um, 
a more publicly transparent process so the general public who weighed in on the original document could then go somewhere, somehow see, well, what did we accomplish? Did, did you do what you said you would do or not? And um, also um, having someone who acts as um, like, like a water master or somebody who is a coordinator and uh, can um, uh, facilitate projects getting done, especially when it's multi-jurisdictional, you know, to kind of break the ice and get different stakeholders together to, to work on, on large scale projects. And um, so um, those will go into the, um, the new plan. And I might a uh, also add um, that um, the County Board of Supervisors approved uh, a recommendation we had, all of us, that uh, the Santa Clara Fire Safe Council be designated um, in an application to become uh, the county coordinator. So they asked for um, funds from the California Fire Safe Council to, to be that coordinator uh, on, on behalf of all stakeholders. So, but it, it still has to be willing participants, um, still have to find the money, the permits, the CEQA, all those other things. Um, what else? Um, we, we missed some key stakeholders. Um, and so um, we, um, for, for the first go around for a countywide plan, I, I think we did a great job, but now we, we wanna make it uh, better. So um, some of the stakeholders that uh, we didn't think to ask uh, to be involved, we're reaching out to them now and um, hopefully they will participate. And then um, uh, the last thing is uh, we, we didn't have much of a, a geospatial database to uh, track uh, what the priority projects were, where, um, who was involved, et cetera. So this new one will, um, will be uh, much improved. In fact, you'll see a video here shortly that will explain a story map, which will rectify a lot of, the, a lot of these things. Uh, next slide, please. So here is the, um, the, the risk, actually it's a hazard map that was done for the 2016 plan. Uh, this was done using land fire, land fire data as 30 meter resolution. It was, it was what we had at that time. And um, the areas that are really red are really bad and really high risk, I should say. Um, if you live there, I, I didn't mean any disparaging comment. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it's um, somewhat coarse, but uh, it was what we had. Uh, next slide. So the, the, the timing is good for us here and now for the CWPP because um, we, we will have a whole new data set. Um, it started after the 2017 fires in Sonoma County where uh, a group got together up there and they were uh, working with the challenges of recovery and, and, and asking themselves, how can this be prevented? Where are the risks and, and those kinds of things? And so they, they needed data to manage and um, a group of consultants got together and notably um, Tuckman and Associates, um, uh, Digital Mapping Solutions, Wireland Res Management and um, well, Santa Cruz Networks is involved with this one, but some other groups. And they developed um, a new data set that's, uh, we call it the fine scale mapping and uh, it's five meter resolution, much, much, much better. And they d developed a whole series of products and then put it out for the public, it's all free. And then other counties saw that and said, that's really cool, we want that too. And then Marin got it and then uh, San Mateo got it. And uh, currently Santa Cruz and Santa Clara are um, more than halfway through the process of, of developing this data um, products. And then uh, Alameda and Contra Costa County have expressed interest in um, they, uh, they're up next. So Cal Fire is funding this grant um, for Santa Cruz and Santa Clara County and will be funding Alameda and Contra Costa too. This, this is a fantastic tool or fantastic data set for land managers for everything from flood control, wildlife habitat management, on and on and on. But um, 
what we were interested in was the, the hazard maps and the risk maps that came out of this data. Um, just not to get into the weeds too much, but um, it incorporates conventional data sources with LIDAR. So you get a, not just a 2D image of, of vegetation, but a 3D. And so you can really truly see where the ladder fuels are that are the, the, the most risk for fire spread and intensity. So anyway, um, they just recently completed their hazard maps and risk maps. And um, they're, they're available now without much fanfare, but uh, you, you'll see them debut in, in this document. The next slide. So here you can see uh, with better resolution and, and better models, a um, little bit more uh, realistic and granular uh, map. And this is what will be in the, the, the next CWPP. Uh, next slide, please. So um, th this is, uh, I wanna address a, a little side note here. So um, there are lots of hazard maps and risk maps that have been produced by a variety of organizations, people um, that, that you can get. CAL FIRE has historically had um, um, fire hazard severity zone maps. And you know, on the back wall, you can see uh, the local jurisdiction and the state's jurisdiction high, uh, color coded there. Those are from 2007. And um, the state just um, updated the model and updated the, the data, the process, all of that. And um, it's going to be released. I thought it was going to be tomorrow, or yesterday, but now it's going to be on the 12th. So um, that will be coming out. Um, public resources code requires that um, we have a 45 day public comment period. So it goes to the uh, OAL on the 9th of December and then um, public comment period will open the 15th of December. And we're going to have one public meeting uh, in Morgan Hill on the 10th of January, but you can submit comments online uh, any way you want. And the close of public comment is uh, January 31st. So um, you'll, you'll be seeing a variety of maps for hazard and risk. Um, they're just used different models. It doesn't mean that one is more accurate or better than another. And all of these will come with really stringent disclaimers of what they are intended for and what they're not intended for. So. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. I'd like to introduce uh, Seth Chalet, the CEO of the Santa Clara Fire Safe Council. Thank you, Chief Worry. Well done. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, first, just a couple of uh, thank yous. First of all, to all those that may be on Zoom tonight, thank you for participating. And for those that are in attendance tonight, thank you for coming. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, Supervisor Ellenberg and your wonderful staff, who I must give shout outs to, uh, Maya Flores, Michael Norris, Angie Redall, and of course, David Fernandez. Fantastic, we couldn't have achieved what we've done without your help, and so thank you very much for coming. Much appreciated. Um, what I also wanna do is take a quick moment, give you a little bit of background about the CWPP from 2016 to today, and then I'll talk a little bit about the Fire Safe Council just to give a little background for those that aren't familiar with us. But I do wanna say right at the start that the Fire Safe Council really wouldn't exist and couldn't exist without the partnerships that we have with County Fire and Cal Fire. We help to support them. We do a number of projects I'll talk about, but without their guidance and without their support, um, we really wouldn't be doing the work that we're doing. So let me talk a little bit about the current CWPP. As Chief Ore mentioned, uh, it started uh, perhaps 2014, the work was completed in 2016, and over the last seven or eight months, we've been strategizing about how do we take this forward? How do we take lessons learned from the 2016 CWPP and hopefully upscale the product, provide a better, perhaps more comprehensive product that can really be utilized by the community and the stakeholders. And that's what we hope to achieve in this multi-month process. So I'll talk a little bit about where we are today. Over the last couple of months, we spent some time really 
putting together three core prongs of the CWPP leadership team. Um, prong number one is the management team, and that consists of about 14 or 15 individuals made up from um, our partners at CAL FIRE, at County FIRE, at the Office of Emergency Management, uh, at the County Office of Planning, and several other organizations. And they uh, provide the senior leadership and will ultimately help to um, balance out in terms of when we have to make formal decisions uh, and weigh pros and cons of various options that we put in the final plan, we will use the CWP management team to help facilitate those discussions. We have an advisory team that as of last count is made up of about 30 different individuals currently. And they come from various organizations throughout the county. Uh, we've got members from uh, San Jose Water, from Valley Water, from Santa Clara County Parks, from Midpen, from a variety of different organizations, large landowners, and people with experience in wildfire, land management, and people that can really help us understand the county. And they will play a leadership role throughout the next 10 months. Uh, they'll make themselves available throughout the county and as a resource to answer questions and ultimately also help to put a, a, a solid product together. Um, lastly, in our three prongs, we've got the stakeholders. Uh, I would endeavor to say the primary stakeholder is you, the community members, because the reason that we really do this is to inform and educate the public. And we hope to accomplish that in a couple of different ways. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, there is some crossover between the advisory team and the stakeholders, but they are independent entities. Uh, again, the stakeholders are made up of key agencies, uh, partners, um, and uh, ultimately uh, annex holders. And uh, what we want to be able to do is take the 2016 annex list and put together a more comprehensive annex list, adding some annexes that ultimately, if we are successful in getting the county coordinator grant that the Board of Supervisors so graciously supported will allow us for a phase two effort, if you will, to take the CWPP forward, work with all the annex holders, work with County Fire and Cal Fire, and track the progress that each of the annexes are making. Next slide, please. So a little bit of self-promotion about the Fire Safe Council, just to give those a bit of a background who aren't familiar with us. Um, we started very much as a grassroots organization about 20 years ago. Uh, people that were living in the high risk uh, wildland urban interface areas, a combination of retired fire department personnel, but the bottom line, everybody was committed to wildfire risk reduction. Um, that was 20 years ago. And as an organization, uh, we have certainly evolved. Um, we have done uh, a number of projects involving uh, wildfire evacuation routes. Um, we've done a variety of fuel breaks. And I think it's, it's fair to say, as we get into the next slide, um, as an organization, we probably really earned our credibility the most in helping and partnering on the Highway 17 fuel break project. In fact, we've got uh, someone in the back of our room here today, Jim Young from the Fire Safe Council, who was really an integral uh, leadership and partner and leader at the Fire Safe Council in working with all of our agencies. And I think as time progressed uh, through the team that we had, people that are no longer at the Fire Safe Council but are still engaged in various aspects of the county government, we've really been able to mature as an organization and take on and support county and CAL FIRE in some of their most significant projects. Uh, some of them are listed here uh, on the screen. I had mentioned uh, Highway 17, We've done uh, fuel breaks, Charcoal Road, about four and a half miles, uh, Page Mill Road, and partnering with our friends at um, uh, the Los Altos uh, Fire District. Um, we've done a series of escape routes. In fact, we recently won a grant from CAL FIRE that will incorporate uh, four escape routes and, fewer and four fuel breaks covering the Mount Madonna Summit Road, Loma Chiquita, Chulspur, and the Bowman Road escape route. Um, I think one of the projects that we're most proud of, and it happens to be the largest project that we've secured to date, is a CAL FIRE Forest Health Grant. It's a seven and a half million dollar three-year grant that we partnered and put together a collaborative with MidPen, County Parks, 
and San Jose water to treat about 1,100 acres in the Los Gatos Creek watershed with a combination of um, wildfire mitigation efforts, but in particular for this project, uh, forest health treatments. Uh, that area has a lot of sudden oak death and challenges from drought stress, and we're working with them. And it was just actually last week we kicked off the project formally after about four or five months with planning. Uh, we have our contractors, uh, boots on the ground, and that's going to take us through the next 10 or 15 months. Um, let me talk a little bit about the CWPP project schedule before I then share a bit of a video with you. Um, as I like to say, for the last number of months, we've been in what I would call the quiet stage of the project. And that's really kind of behind the scenes, doing a lot of planning, putting together the three groups that I had mentioned before, uh, the key stakeholders, um, the advisory council, and the management team. And if you look here, you'll see a, a timeline that kind of ticks off all of the core major milestones we've achieved so far and those that we hope to be able to uh, move forward with. Um, we have had a series of tasks, I would say one through six, uh, Chief Ore and even uh, Director Dana Reed had talked about some of those particular uh, projects and the work that we did. We're really now at our December task seven guideline, which is where we are tonight. Uh, this is our second of five community town hall and workshop meetings. The first was last Thursday in Saratoga. We're here tonight. We're gonna to be tomorrow night at the county chambers uh, with Supervisor Chavez. Then we take a break for a couple of days. And then Monday, December 13th, uh, the gang here will be in Milpitas. And we finish up uh, on the 15th of December at council chambers in Morgan Hill. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to live in the district. If there are questions that you didn't think of, questions that aren't answered tonight, please come to any of our other meetings. You're welcome, we do this for the public. Uh, task eight is the action plan and draft document. And right now we've got that targeted for September of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, September of 2022. Well, we're here already uh, with that actually. But we hope that we'll have the final CWPP done plus or minus in June. Obviously there are several things that can influence that date, but we're gonna stick to it as best we can. And then last but not least, which is where I'm gonna lead into a video, one of the significant changes that we hope that you'll notice from 2016 to today's CWPP, as Chief Oremed, the prior CWP, CWPP, like most of them, was a phone book size document. And what we wanna do is make it an interactive document where the public can engage, see the progress, where the public can come in and put in requests, about projects that they might wanna have included. So it's gonna be a living, breathing document through this mechanism called the story map. And so what I wanna do now is take a break. We've got about a nine to 10 minute or so video of what the story map will look like. Now, this is not going to be the story map for our CWPP. It's a rep representative example, and it'll, it should give each of you an opportunity to see the interactivity and hopefully what you can gain from that um, uh, story map incarnation. So without further ado, I'll ask Amanda, thank you, to push the button, and now we'll have the story map. Good evening, everyone. So the Santa Clara County Community Wealth Architecture Plan will be developing a project hub site and story map to accompany the planning effort that will be a medium through which we can share information about the project and that the public can share their thoughts and input into the project. We're developing that project hub site and story map now, um, but I wanted to show you a similar deliverable that was developed for another project so that you all can understand what this content will look like. So this hub site on my screen is from the Three Rivers Fire Safe Council Community Welfare Protection Plan. And the hub site and story map for Santa Clara County will be a similar format to this. A hub site is basically a project landing page. It's, it's sort of a one-stop shop for all project information. So within the hub site, we have a link to the story map, which I will share shortly. We also have posted a dashboard 
which can be linked to all of the project recommendations that are developed as part of this CWPP, and it will provide updates on progress made towards each of those projects. We can link to community survey, and we'll also have links to other homeowner resources that could be valuable to this community. That includes things like emergency notifications, um, information on wildfire mitigation measures for actions around your home and other resources that might be pertinent to this project. We can also post information on upcoming meeting schedules and announcements. So the hub site will be the place where we'll announce the availability of the draft document for review by the public. And then we have information on um, contact information for the project team. From the hub site, you can access the story map. A story map is essentially a website that conveys all of the information about the project in a spatial format. So you treat the story map like you would any website. You can scroll up and down, and you can access content through this navigation panel along the top. A story map is designed to be very interactive and has a lot of spatial content, so hence the name story map. It has a lot of map content that you can engage with um, to learn more about the project. You can zoom in and out. This layer here is the general location for this particular plan, and they'll be very similar for the Santa Clara plan. We have information on the project. We can put information on current wildfires. So this is a dynamic layer where it will show existing and active fires in the event that they're awesome. We have information on project history, information on the national cohesive strategy, which is the federal oversight for the plan, information on the Healthy Forest Restoration Act, and then information on how to navigate, since this might be a new platform that some people have not utilized previously. We also have a page on public involvement. So this is a good place for you to learn what upcoming scheduled events there are, um, links to other communication tools, so links back to the hub site where we were previously, links to social media that the Fire Safe Council has information available through and other information through uh, a CWPP flyer or community survey. This section is entitled the fire environment. It has a lot of technical information. So this is here, this is where we will provide information on the wildland urban interface. You can zoom into the map. You can click on each of these polygons to learn more information. You can click on photos. You can click on the polygon. And this will link you to, to more information that will come up in a pop-up uh, section. We also have a section of fire regime. This talks about how each of the different vegetation types would burn within the planning area. We have mapping on vegetation. You can learn about different vegetation types. Then we have maps that convey fuel models. So how would each of those different vegetation types on the ground burn? And we have this toggle tool that shows you how vegetation is classified into different fuel models. And you can click on the legend and it will tell you more information about the fuel models. And then if you wanna learn more about the fuel models, you can click here for, for a description of each of the fuel models. This section talks about fire history. We have this tool at the bottom. If I click this play button, it will move us from 1910 all the way through to present day, and each of these areas that are populating on the map 
of previous fires that have occurred within the vicinity of this particular project area. You can click on each of these fires to learn more information about it, what the name of the fire was and the year. And then we also have graphical data here that conveys information about the fires. So if you're interested in how many fires have occurred in July over this time period, you can click on this buffer and it will generate those fires on the map. Or fires by cause, how many arson fires have there been in June, in May, in August, it will show on the map those particular data. Then we have background information on the fire season and challenges, including climate change. We have information on decision support tools that our fire responders utilize. We have models of fire response, information on who the local response resources are, as well as state response and federal response. We have evacuation resources where you can click for more information. And then we have evacuation route risk analysis that shows within the community which roads are at higher risk for entrapment or evacuation risk based on features of that road, including things like sinuosity, road surfacing, grade, and width. We also have road entrapment analysis and different zones for evacuation that have been delineated by this particular core team. Then we have our wildland urban interface risk and hazard assessments. Again, you can zoom in and out. The areas in red, are obviously high risk, the areas in green are low risk. It serves as kind of a heat map. You can click on the polygons and then download PDFs that provide more information about how the hazard assessment was completed and the specific findings from that assessment. And then to zoom in, just keep scrolling and we have a summary of the positive and negative ratings or components that went into that particular rating and recommendations for mitigating that risk. And as we scroll, it zooms us around our project area to look at the various different community polygons. We have a section on values at risk. These are all of those things that are important to the community to be protected. And we use this information as the core team to help us develop recommendations for protection of those various different values at risk. This is a very data rich layer. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to populate, but we have each of those values broken down into natural, socioeconomic, and you see they're starting to populate now, including things like fire departments, communication towers, hospitals, and cultural values at risk. So historic properties, archaeological resources, cultural landscapes, and other infrastructure that should be protected. Mitigation strategies are what form the real meat of a CWPP. And we break those mitigation strategies down into the three main components of the National Wildfire Management Cohesive Strategy. And those components are restoring and maintaining landscapes, fire adapted communities, and fire response. So when we talk about resilient landscapes, we're talking about restoring and maintaining those landscapes using methods like hazardous fuels reduction or vegetation management. 
So as a core team, we develop recommendations specific to this resilient landscapes component. We develop tables. that summarize different treatment options. And this will be part of the CWPP. Within these tables, we have a project description. We identify the priority for that project. We look at the status of the project, the, the location and who the land ownership would be. We develop a methodology or approach to implementing that project. We describe by implementing that project, what does that serve to do to mitigate wildfire risk? We have a timeline, we have monitoring or maintenance requirements, and then we provide various different funding sources. So we have these tables developed for various different projects across the planning area. So for the county, it's gonna be across the county, we will develop projects for hazardous fuels mitigation with each of these components to it. Here's a map of the various existing and planned treatments that are occurring within this particular project area. So we gather all this data from our agency partners and put it onto this map. So it's a place where all agencies can see what other actions are occurring within the landscape. We also then identified areas of concern. So you can scroll back and forth. This layer here shows the risk assessments. This layer here shows various different polygons that have been delineated by our planning team to address some of these higher risk areas. As you can see, these polygons delineate around some of the high risk areas. We have this section on fire adapted communities. Fire adapted communities focuses on projects related to education and outreach for communities, as well as actions that homeowners can take to address structural ignitability. You all have a lot of resources for education and outreach, particularly within the state um, and also within the county. Lots of agencies have developed materials that will help inform you all on what you need to do on your property. And we convey that information here through actions for homeowners, click on various different extra additional content that provides pop-ups. And then this third section is on safe and effective wildfire response. This provides recommendations to help support your fire responders. So the local fire department, the Cal Fire Department, and other resources that provide that emergency management and effective response. So if I were to click here, that take it to a similar table of recommendations. And then monitoring and evaluation strategies. It's important that this isn't a one-time deal to address mitigation. A lot of projects need to have repeated and frequent maintenance and monitoring. And so we have recommendation tables that identify how frequently each of these projects should be monitored or revised. And the timeline for updating the CWPP. This plan should be considered a live document the core team will be reconvening every six months, every year to make sure that the project is moving along, that the projects are being implemented, that there are not any hurdles that are preventing implementation of projects. And they'll be revisiting and, and recognizing when they need to update the document. We also have a section on post-fire recovery that provides resources for homeowners and for agencies for returning to your home or to your property after it has been a fire. And then we have available other homeowner resources. As I mentioned again, a, a one-stop shop for resources that are specific to Santa Clara County and to California.
when the draft document is available for review, it will be posted here and you'll be able to click and it will generate a PDF of the document that you can then download, review, and provide comments on. And we have this contact us page, so you know who to reach out to for any questions. And then we also provide a glossary and references. Thank you for your time. We think this tool is gonna to really provide a lot of value to this planning effort. And we're excited to provide the plan, the hub and the story map to you in the next month or so. Thank you. Well, hopefully that provided some insight into ultimately what we hope to accomplish with our story map. Again, I think the most important takeaway from my perspective tonight is we're holding these town meetings because we want public engagement. We want your input into the document. And as importantly, as the document is finalized, we wanna make the story map the vehicle for us to be able to update the county on projects, the status of projects, the progress of projects, and to be able to take input. So. As Vicki said, who uh, was the um, person that uh, walked us through the story map, we hope to have this uh, up and running in the next 60 days with actual data uh, from uh, our area. Uh, a couple of things before we go into the Q&A sec uh, session tonight. Again, I just wanna take a quick moment. Uh, I really do wanna thank all of our partners. Uh, first and foremost, our friends at County Fire, uh, Chief Lolly, Chief Glass, Chief Matheson, um, Dana Reed, Director of Office Emergency Management. Uh, thank you for giving up a Tuesday evening to be here. Much appreciated. Uh, Chief Ore, I wanna thank you and uh, the CAL FIRE partners, not only for the funding support to help support this phase of the um, CWPP, uh, but also to thank you to all the fire department personnel uh, that are here in the audience tonight. Um, last but not least, of course, uh, to Supervisor Ellenberg and her fantastic team. Um, it's really important and I feel grateful that we have a very supportive board of supervisors that are committed to wildfire engagement and wildfire mitigation. And that's really important. So uh, before we go into uh, audience Q&A, again, thank you to everybody. Lastly, uh, for those that are here in attendance tonight, you'll see three tables around the room. We've got a variety of brochures. We've got one table on fire adapted communities, uh, a second table that's being staffed by um, the fire, uh, fire Safe Council Advisory Board member and wildland officer for uh, San Jose Fire, Mark Thomas. Thank you for staffing that. And we've got a third table on safe and effective wildfire response. So without further ado, uh, let me go into the Q&A portion. And is there any people in attendance today that have any questions they'd like answered. If you do, please step up to the mic, introduce yourself and myself or any of the personnel in the audience uh, will be glad to take those questions. Going once. I, I, you know, when I, when, when I hear these things, I really do take it as we've accomplished our objective. We've answered everything possibly and checked the box somewhere earlier in the beginning. Um, I do want to maybe mention a couple of things. I've had people as I get around in the community um, come up to me and, and ask uh, a number of questions. And so, you know, one of the questions that I've been asked is, once the CWPP is finalized, will there be yet another public meeting to kind of introduce and review that? And the answer is yes. We do hope to hold one countywide webinar. And if we're successful, we'll have it as a moderated webinar where questions can be asked and answered in real time. And that'll be 10 months, 11 months or so, plus or minus from now, once the CWPP is published, where we can give the community an opportunity to read it, go through it, and ask their questions. So uh, for those listening uh, on Zoom tonight, you will have another chance uh, to do that once the document is complete. Any other questions from anybody in the audience I can answer? Well, if not, I wanna thank you again for your participation and your attendance, and please stop by and see one of our partners 
and ask your questions at the booths. On behalf of all of our team, again, thank you. And we will see you tomorrow night in county chambers in San Jose uh, with Supervisor Chavez. Thank you, everybody.